The stream is live, it says. Good evening, Fiona and Graham. Thank you for joining me tonight in uh, what I'm going to call my celebratory night because this is the first weekend of 2024 where I haven't been on bail. And I will drink to that. Thank you very much for having us on, Trevor. And we've, so come, lovely. we've come supplied. We've got champagne that we're going to open to celebrate with you because it's been a... Hey, well, thank you. And do you know what? Everyone in the chat, thank you for joining us tonight. It's been a, it's yeah, been a roller coaster of the last eight months. And I have, if I'm honest, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed every bump of the roller coaster because... Um, <laughs> Fiona, I'm, uh, the thing is, Fiona and Graham... Um, See, whenever you, as you have done, whenever you throw yourself in the public eye, it comes with scrutiny and you're going to get it. The minute you lift your head above the parapet and you want to do something, you're going to have people knock it down. And you know what? See if you're a resilient guy or if you're really, really strong, you can take all these knocks like a pinch of salt. Yeah. I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, my mum was in the public eye a lot when I was little. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really understand what it was all about. So I was in the papers a lot when I was a kid about various stories, really weird stories. Yeah, people um, making shit up. Yeah, people making shit up. But she was a politician, so of course you were going to get that. Um, yeah. So yeah, right. You do. I, people, people do get scrutiny. They yeah, do. yeah. We can't see the chat. But just thought I'd mention it. Well, right. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna give. I'm going to say thank you to you and Graham, actually, because um, there's people in the chat watching here, and I will, and I, 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 I wear my heart on my sleeve, and I wear my crown on my chest. Anyway, um, what I will say is, you were the people that introduced me to Foxy three one three, and you know what? He's a bundle of joy, and he is lovely, isn't he? He's I've lovely. Sort of, I've sort He's of adopted lovely. him. I've sort of adopted him as a um, as a long lost son. <laughs> He's wonderful. I think he's wonderful. Now then, Foxy. Yeah. I can't um, see the chat. I've got no chat box, so I can't see the, your comments. There's something very comforting about him when I watch his videos. He's a good egg. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I used to go around, and I think because he was close with his grandfather. Reminds me yeah. when I used to visit my gran, and we'd all huddle up around the fire, and she'd tell stories, and he he gives me that sort of sense of comfort, comfort with his videos, I, especially Robert the Cat. He's very lucky. He's very lucky. He's never because... not been yes. on bail. <laughs> freedom! You. My freedom, son's freedom. Is that um, the doorbell? I am. Um, I don't. The thing is, and I hate to say this, but the truth is, I was too young. I don't remember my grandfathers, my mum's, or my dad's dad. I remember both my grands, but I don't remember the grandfathers. I know oh. that I was alive when they were about, but uh, I was too young. It's quite sad, but. Uh, I I only remember my, my dad's dad. My mum's dad was dead, but my dad's dad. My father was a very conservative person. Now, I don't mean political. I mean his clothes. He would yeah. wear the same suit, very uptight. But his father wore multicoloured suits with massive velvet bow ties and pink frilly shirts. Uh, quite a contrast to my dad. Wow. <laughs> my dad used to look down at Christmas and think, oh, my God. I didn't bring it down. I have to break this down. <laughs> Today, I went to meet one of my subscribers, a great guy called Michael, uh, who's designed all the T-shirts. And I've got a hat and a T-shirt. I'll bring it later. I've, I've only just got in, as you know, so it's up the stairs with my case. But the, some stuff are looking good. What Michael wants to do, and I've endorsed it, is he wants to be able to sell the T-shirts and the hats through to my subscribers and right. the profits, and he wants to send the profits to PTSD resolution. And I think that's a great idea. Um, and I did promise him one thing tonight, Fiona. I did promise him. I did say that I would give a fantastic shout out to his daughter. Whenever he told me her name, I went, for fuck's sake. But anyway, her name's Megan. <laughs> right, I thought you were gonna say Fiona for a minute then. Megan. No, nope. Megan and James. <laughs> um, She's only 23 and she's managed to, especially in this current financial shit, she's managed to get buy her own house. That is awesome. So wow. Megan yes. and James, Megan and James, well done and been able to purchase your own house at such a young age. And wow. Amazing, isn't it? 
it is it is it's so difficult for young people to get on the prop it's difficult for anybody to get on the property ladder these days all yeah. the kids here in spain they're really into the flat pack houses oh yeah, yeah. They, all, they buy a piece of land and it's different type of planning concern and they they buy one that ready made comes with everything in it the people come they build it and it's it's all fitted well i was in that I'm, I'm trying not to i need to sneeze it's got to come at some stage but the, Go for it. about i think it was about five years ago um i went with uh, my then wife and uh, in fact it was longer than that we didn't even have sebastian jesus christ that's just over 13 years ago then we went to hamburg in germany and um the flat pack houses were amazing they really were stunning and here, here in spain they start at ten thousand euros and you get a lot of house for ten thousand euros yeah wow well so, we this is a bed set nowadays you know what i mean well the grumpy snapper is on here he knows and gwen knows and filipinos know in order to you can buy land in the philippines but you have to have a you have obviously have the filipino or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah you, you can buy land there and build your own house and it's i mean it's like a fifth of the price it is for a house anywhere in the uk exactly yeah. exactly yeah um all the kids are looking into and they're very google houses as well they come with all the ducting electricity all the plumbing everything all yeah. in yeah yeah Oh. Wasn't, wasn't Elon Musk doing modular houses? Yeah, but his are quite expensive, actually. His are quite small. They do come with everything. They're ten thousand dollars, but you you for ten thousand euros here in Spain, you can get a house twice the size. Wow! Right, and it's it's a license that you get because it's temporary, so it's not planning consent. There's someone in the chat called Absolutely Bald and Boring. I have no idea who that is. Let's just let's just ignore that. Anyway, um, <laughs> I have no idea who that is. Yeah, not, but listen, not, it's been a one. I mean, don't get me wrong, guys. Uh, do you know what's great? You've been through the mill. It's great. I mean, I've had the best night's sleep over the last couple of nights. Have been fantastic for me. I mean, I've had so much shit lifted. I've had so many emails, so many messages, so many YouTubers. Uh, yeah, all different yeah. things happening. Uh, you've had the same, but. It's it's pretty amazing, uh, and I feel I feel really happy right now. Actually, I really do because everything's it, coming together. Yeah. It, it's great. amazing the difference it makes to sleep. I mean, I've always had insomnia anyway, so I I've always struggled to sleep. But yeah, when you've got stress and you feel tense, and, and yeah. then it's suddenly gone, you you are, yeah you get do get a good night's sleep at last. Thank goodness. I, I hear you laughed yourself to sleep <laughs> I heard yesterday. That last night I laughed myself to sleep. I tell you that. I mean. I woke up and my pillow was all wet from drools. <laughs> but, um, I mean, honestly, it's been a, uh, it's, it's been a, yeah, it's been a bumpy road. But I would say more like pebbles on the road than proper things. But it's listen, easy. last night something happened, Fiona, and you know, I know you know something happened last night which just made me elated, and that was a judge in America demanded. Um yes i demand to see harry <laughs> windsor's immigration papers and then i'll make a decision if it needs to if it needs to be put out publicly now the thing is this this is amazing because either way he's fucked because he wrote in his book he took drugs if he's left it off the immigration paper he's lied that's a criminal offense and an automatic deportation and a ban from entering the united states so we are going to have possibly the first grifter in the royal family to be kicked out of America. That is a possibility. The, the lawyers yeah. are right that he could he could say he was just making it up in the book. Yeah. However, as you say, <laughs> yes, is he going to shave his head bald so that he cannot give any samples? Because that's what they do. They check the hair. And from hair growth, they can see how many months, depending on how long. Like my my hair's quite long, so I don't know how long it would take Wasn't to get that there. Why Britney, a year or Britney something. Britney Spears saved it, didn't she? It it? Could be. So he's so all that was the rumor, wasn't it? He's time. had all those hair plugs done. Is he going to go? Zzz, is he going to whip it all off? Well, the thing is, he can do whatever he wants. He <laughs> he, in his own admittance, his book is what? Is it fact or fiction? It's in the fact. It's his honest biography. He has admitted that. 
These are his words. Now, if he says, I'm sorry, but they're not my words, uh, we've heard you in fucking audio. Uh, you said it no. with your own words. No, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was the interview. Yeah. The psychiatrist. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. The in, interview in, in the CGI room. Remember that one? Dr. Gabor, or whatever he was called. He said he deeply Hallucinogenic drugs. Yeah. It's, it's well, a bit dodgy subject in America, LSD. Well, yeah. Someone told me, I don't know for a fact, but someone told me you take it like seven times, you, you're legally insane or something stupid. No, like that. yeah, that's what I heard. I can say I don't this. Know if that's true or not. I'm not a lawyer. No, I know I can say this legally because of the color of my hair. But if they were to take samples of his hair, they would be smells of piss. <laughs> Why? Ginger hair smells of piss. It's a thing. Do, do you know, Trevor, there's a multi, multi billion dollar hair industry to dye hair red. I know because most of my life I've been <laughs> dyeing my hair red. I love red hair. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with red hair. I adore it. It's it's just it's oh. such a glamorous colour. I've only gone blonde because I've got so much grey. Kate Winslet in Titanic. Well, yes. she, had, she had the red in her head. Didn't she? Julie, Julianne Lewis has put something in the, in the comments here. Uh, which has just triggered me a little bit. I don't mean in a bad way, but oh dear. Oh no. the stripper, the stripper that's got Prince Harry's boxer shorts will have DNA on them. Those boxer shorts could be worth millions. <laughs> if, if they're the real shorts. <laughs> Even if they're the real ones, 2012, that's 12 years old, isn't it? Well, yeah. DNA, I don't know okay. on pants. I don't know, I'm not a DNA expert on pants. Have you got to get I'm them not. verified, like the pants, from the DNA sample? <coughs> See if they really are Harry's pants. Do you mean they could do a Jurassic Park and make loads of clones of Harry, multiple Harrys? Oh my God! Well, the thing is, for you now, we have right, the judge has made a decision that he he he's demanding Homeland Security give over the information. Yeah. Now that could be like a ploy, because then what he says we have to go by. So. We all know that the Biden administration is applying pressure to the courts to keep them secret. So there's no reason why the president can't get personally involved and make that judge dance to his little circle or dance could to his they, little Could they forge them? Could they forge some new ones? But Possibly. then, no, Possibly. they can't because what would they put? Yeah, I took a load of mushrooms. I ate a load of mushrooms. Yeah, I smoked joints. They can't, can they? It's got to remain that he never took anything. I bet you he put on it. He never. He's never taken anything. I bet you he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means he's, it's all he lied in his book and in the interviews and things. Yeah. But I mean, his hair definitely. They would see if he but has taken anything in the last few months. Does this not tie in with what's going on though? Because right, we've got this judge uh, who's, who's who's determined to push forward. You've got the Heritage Foundation, which want answers. You've got. I mean, America's split. And when I say split, it's not even a 50-50 split. There's more people now sick of them. If you watch Big Brother, you, you would have heard Sharon Osborne say people are sick of them. So you've got like probably a seven, 70, 30, 70 don't want them, 30 want them. And this may tie into why Meghan Markle at the minute is reaching out to PR companies in the UK to try and rebrand her image. Oh, I because if Harry's, because if Harry's, I yes, saw that. If Harry can potentially, if, if they kick him out, she's going to go with him because without Harry, let's be honest, she's a non entity, right? She's not in the app. So, does it, I mean, I feel and I felt for some time that he's definitely coming back to the UK. Whether the family let him into private events or not, I don't know. But I felt that he's, he's going to feel he needs to position himself in the UK to be to be in it to win it you know get money out of them get favors um uh, maybe try and worm his way into councillor of state and i feel she will come with him i don't buy all this stuff she she'll never set foot in the uk again no 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 yeah. she will follow the money she will follow the titles for sure i don't reckon she will you don't reckon she'll what come uh, back to the uk i do oh, i bet you pound she'll be rude. a pound you're on i bet you a pound she'll there come back go. there you go go ahead watching Gwen, Gwen, I know you're at work. I know you're watching. Well, I rushed in, if I'm honest, Gwen. I got dropped off. I rushed in. I got myself sorted. I went into the kitchen. I went into the wine rack. You had two bottles there. If I'm honest, I'm going to be honest. 
I thought it was red wine. I took the cork out and it was white wine. So I'm just having a little bit. I haven't filled the glass up like like I normally do with you. You know what falls over the top? I just did a little bit. <laughs> I've got a massive wine glass downstairs. They bought it for me for my birthday. Big enough to just break. for a laugh, it's like a goldfish bowl. It's enormous. But it's a wine glass. We just thought oh. we could pour a litre into it and it'd just be in the bottom. It looked right. Until yeah. you got on the scale, it's massive. <laughs> Wow. Well, yeah, uh, there's a lot going on. I, I, do you know what? See, I do my morning rants. Um, I get up and I look at the media. Uh, I never, ever, I want to point this out, I never, ever, ever look at the sun because it writes shit. Now, oh, something I'd like to point out, because this happened this evening. Whenever I was being driven here by my ex-wife, um, I had to make a call to a friend. Uh, I know people saying, oh, Trevor thinks he's got a hotline to soldier ass. Fucking do really, but then um, what I did was tonight on the way here. So what happened was over the last couple of days, the defense editor for the meal, Mark Nickel, has been doing stories about special forces guys, blah blah blah, in the meal. But tonight, um, I noticed when I was coming here that uh, he had sent me a WhatsApp message, the defense editor, asking me if I would back me along with other people. Trevor, can I throw your name in down to back our campaign because we're putting pressure on on the government to. Uh, up the budget to give to the MOD. I'm gonna be honest, he sent me the message. Uh I just responded straight away and then I went, oh fuck, I should have I should have let Bob know for maybe no blah blah. So but I responded saying, Mark, there's 62,000 civil servants that work at the MOD. They're all getting massive wages. They waste billions of pounds a year in field projects and they're giving a lot of our defense budget away to Ukraine. Why the fuck would I endorse giving them extra money? They're incompetent. Anyway, and I sent it, and then I went, maybe I should have checked that for someone. So then I sent it to my friends to have a look. I sent the message to my friends, and then I phoned Bob in the car here. I said, I said, Luba, can you turn off the radio? We'd have a chat. I said, Bob, did you see what I sent? He says, yep. He says, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, mate, 100%. That's the prick that's thrown us all under the bus. So um, why should we support him? And I went, well, it's not about supporting him. Uh, it's about, I said to him, it's about my honest opinion. That, that's what I think. Why should we give, why should we give the MOD more money if they keep wasting millions? You know what I mean? It's just. I'm so, not really doing anything, are they? I mean, you look, look at the look at the the Yemen. There's a there's a thing going down at the moment. It's yeah, these are sinking ships, aren't they? And um, where's yeah. our aircraft carrier? What's it doing? It's it's chugging about, isn't it? It's gone gone for repairs or something, you know. What's the point of having billions of pounds in warships if you're not going to get involved when there's a war? Well, exactly. I mean, that's what they're I mean, for, aren't they? There was a guy involved, I won't mention his name, but I think you might people may know. As long as I don't mention his name, there was a guy involved in my witness intimidation thing who was accused. Um, he deployed the other day uh, out to that part of the world to go and help do certain things. So, um, yeah, so it's uh, yeah. The, the, there's still a lot of people trying to do a lot of work. thing is, Government's hands are tied, but people that are involved in civilian military companies, basically like mercenaries, are being paid to go and do things on behalf of governments. But oh if you're my. caught, oh okay, mm -hmm. okay. Like black could could people, they yeah. be classed as civil servants or under the, the budget? No, the the oh, <laughs> it's the big thing. Yeah, yeah. We we had a very strange guy on the dolphin boat a few years back. Oh, yeah. uh, one guy, he was I think South African. Yeah. He had a huge bodyguard and his little girl with him. And his job was well, I say job. His company uh, basically smuggled gold through war zones, a lot of gold for governments. I mean, he was the, one of the most insane passes. It was the only time I really <laughs> thought it was just me and Graham and him and this huge bodyguard at sea. Yeah. And it was one of those situations. They were so crazy. I thought, you yeah. know, we might have a problem. You know, that, yeah. together. There's loads of people in life that say, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Yeah, yeah. And He was one of those people. If he said that, you think he probably will, actually. You know, Graham, you have, to watch what you're saying. Have, Graham, you have to watch what you're saying alive, because that could be cut and pasted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Have either uh, of you yeah. guys Right. Uh, someone says, I can't pronounce that. Is it Zepker K9? Mercenaries work independently. I agree. Mercenaries do work independently, 
But mercenaries work for somebody that works for somebody that works for somebody that is normally tied to the government. Um, someone else just asked a question now, I think probably for you, Fiona. Um, Julie Ann Lewis, does anyone know about Megalire being deposed in Sam's case in May? I do not know. Uh, my best guess would be to go and watch the Royal Grift. She is on it. She's on it. All the latest updates on Samantha Markle's case. That's my go to channel. And she did one the other night and she did say there was an update. But the judge has still got to make a decision as to whether the whole thing is going to go forward. And I think I think Judge Honeywell probably will. I was going to ask you two guys, have you seen these laser things that shoot down drones? Did you see that in the Daily Mail? No. It was a few weeks ago. I, I know what you mean, yes. And they reckon that's going to be the future. Is that literally a there's red laser, laser designation? There's laser de no, no, no. This target is a, designation. This is a laser. The laser the fires. The laser takes the thing out. The laser takes the thing out. And I they reckon that. it's going to be I've available to the military in a couple no, of years. I've heard of rail guns and things, but I've Do you know what, Fiona? Uh, any experience Fiona, with them. Fiona, back in 2008, Back in 2008, when I was working in parts of Afghanistan, I had a thing at the end of my, I had an ACOG weapon system, uh, the sighting system. At the, end of my, at the end of my rifle, I had a thing called an LLM, an LLM, a laser light marker, and I could put it on IR. This is oh, how, this is a red dot, you mean? On a... Sort so, of. You, you, this, you're putting a red so, dot on a target and an airplane's coming in, say, hitting the target. Was, Graham, it wasn't a red dot. So I would get on my weapon system and I would, yeah, I my guys would be aiming at the target. And we would have, we could see it on our steer site. It was IR. And I'd have me, uh, I'd have me head mounted uh, night vision down on one, my monocle on. I would have my monocle on. I would be looking through the site and I'd be lining up infrared. You can't see it with the eye. And I would have it on the target. Now, one of our guys would send, uh, I can't remember what it was called, uh, some target thing to the, to the Apache. And they would fire down at the target that I was looking at through uh, infrared. Mm, mm. Well, the problem with infrared is if, you, if, you, if your enemy's got infrared goggles, they can see you. That's your out there, You know what I mean? That's, that's why image intensifiers always seem to appeal to me more. That was 15 years ago. I mean, the yeah. technology gets better and better, doesn't it? Well, yes, it perhaps that's they've, why they've had they, laser designation for years. That's why I was wondering yeah. if they would end up having less personnel. Can you see that? Yeah. Can everybody can just see that? What do you see? If you, I don't know why, sometimes when you're talking to someone on the WhatsApp, like a I agree, I up. agree, I agree. I think it's great, I agree. See if does you're positive, the thumbs come up. It, it never does it for me. Or if you're like I've angry, seen that. I've my people have been talking, they put the thumb up <laughs> and then the thumb appears and goes, woo. Yeah. Across the screen. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, getting back to the, the news today, did you hear there's another Metropolitan Police officer been charged with murder? Uh-huh. I'm not surprised. Really? I couldn't believe it. I thought, what, another one? I, I mean, yeah. one, one is super, super rare. Yeah. But who? Yeah. You know, come on. What? Listen, Some guy got shot go... dead in the street, didn't he? And then the policeman's been charged. I'm going to go and bring something on, so give me a second. Okay. okay. I, well, we can't see the chat, but I've got a question for everybody, and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people will have seen this um, because it's something I see in the papers a lot, but I never comment on it because I just don't know what to make of it. There's a man, and he's called something like Kanye West, if I've got this correctly, and I think he was married to Kim Kardashian, and now he has a girlfriend or a wife called Bianca. Okay, bear with me, guys, because I'm not really that up on it. Perhaps Ricky. Trevor will correct me. Is it Kanye West, and he has a girlfriend called Bianca, yep. who goes out in public in the most extraordinary outfits? I mean, yeah. virtually oh, I know what you mean. naked, yeah, 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 yeah. naked. I just wondered it. And I, every time I see this, I think, my God, what's going on there? Is she being abused? Is this something weird going on? No. There? I think she's a very, very intelligent woman. Really? I, okay. I honestly believe she's intelligent. I do believe she's a Kim Kardashian type clone. She looks a bit like her. She, she looks I, a lot like her, yes. I think she's playing along with Kanye. She's going to become super famous. She's going to dump that idiot. And then she's going to have all these contracts. She's not stupid. I think she's very intelligent what she's doing. Look, what, do, you, do you think she might become a brand ambassador for something like... Hey, what's this? What's something this? Something like Kling Film. Hey, 
All and... Trevorites follow a cult. <laughs> <laughs> Michael made me that. Uh, should sell him, Trevor. Should sell him no, online. The man, the man apparently. Oh, the man selling sell him, sell is he? Okay. Uh, All Trevorites follow a cult. All t shirts. T shirts. Cult 45. Oh, yeah. yes. Is it still the same? No, no, it's, no. It's, it's there's no you in cult. That's right. Samuel, you know he was a he was the man, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I've got some. Of the, I've got some of the comments up on here. Um, so yeah, I just wondered, yeah, why why that woman is. Oh, doing she's got she's got the comments on her phone. I now, wouldn't so. go out in. I mean, no one would want to see me go out in public in a see through outfit. She's got right. a lovely oh, figure. I know someone that would. Do you? Oh my God! Really? Yeah, he's on Twitter. He talks about you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist it. Couldn't resist I don't it. know who you're talking about, Trevor. I've got I no idea. No I have no idea. Can you imagine? though? No? can you imagine? though? No? if if if, <laughs> if you if you were able to tell your girlfriend what to wear, and she'd go out with you, and she'd wear whatever you said. I mean, how bizarre would that be? <laughs> I mean, it's never been, listen, it's never been done. <laughs> I've tried, I've got no chance, you know what I mean? But I hear <laughs> us men get it, don't we? You're not going to let me dress like that, go and change that, go and do this. And we're like, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, can you imagine if actually... the world, if, the, if all the women did as they were told and wore what the fellas said? I mean, the, 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 that would be one bizarre planet, wouldn't it? <laughs> he would literally have me go out the house dressed like little Bo Peep. <laughs> what have I got here? Oh, with a bonnet oh, and everything. There's some sheep. Fiona, how did I forget this? I did do a post today about this, and I have to mention it because my life in my life, I look up to many different women. Today mm. is International Women's Day. Yes, so it I is. Thought it was Mother's Day on Sunday or something. It is. So today's on, International Women's Day. Something. But it's it it should be, it they should rename it International Womb Day. So only women with wombs can celebrate it. Oh, I know. That's that's the daft argument. But then you'd get people who would have hysterectomies getting all upset. Oh, for fuck. And going into one, and then you think, oh, shit, I didn't mean it like that. And then, then you'd have a load of grief. Oh, goodness me. What about... Don't go there, Trevor. Just don't go there. <laughs> no, 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 Graham. Fuck it. What about <coughs> International Born as a Woman Day? That cuts everything out. Yeah. yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah I suppose so. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I mean, each to their own. I I don't mind what people want to wear, what people want to go out with. What I don't people care. Want to identify. I, I honestly, genuinely don't care what people. Well, get you know what? Them. I would so not. No one gets hurt, and everyone's. I would not generally go to my way to upset a trans woman because they've got balls. Um, so <laughs> that was a low blow. <laughs> you can't blow the belt there, Trevor. That was unintentional. That was <laughs> unintentional. <laughs> no, oh. see, I'm from Brighton, so a lot of people move to Brighton, or they yeah, used yeah, to. Yeah. I suppose maybe not so much these days, but they oh, used to. Yeah. But because yeah. they had to live um, a year pre-op, or at least a year, maybe yeah. two years. Yeah. So they would come to Brighton because in Brighton, it, I mean, no one cares. It, you can, it, you can do yeah. what you want. Like. That yeah. Bianca lady, she could go through Churchill Square. No problem. No one would care. What was that guy <laughs> called DPM Two Jags? What was he called? Oh, the um, Labour guy. The Labour um, guy with Tony Blair, the Deputy Prime Minister. John Prescott. Prescott. John Prescott. We saw a guy right, and he was a dead spit of Prescott. Right, he wasn't Prescott, but he was wearing a pink tutu. No, he wasn't. He was wearing a um, in a, Brighton. He right. was wearing a lavender chiffon cocktail dress and high heels. And we just clocked him like that and just thought. And it was Graham, actually, just carrying on it, Brighton, you know, it's like that. It was actually Graham. during the Labour Party. See if, you, see if you're a bloke. Let, let me point this out. See if you're a biological bloke. Yeah. And you're wearing a wig. And you've had Botox. And you're wearing lipsticks. And you've had breasts. And you've done every, you've done everything you can to look like a woman. Do you know you're something? Fall, Everyone can still see that you're a fucking man. <laughs> not necessarily. Not necessarily. Some of them... Um, it really suits them. Oh, oh, them yes. Oh, oh, really? I had to scare my life with one of them. 
I was in, where, where was I? Where was I? I was in Brunei many years ago. And we uh, we had a night off in the jungle. And I went down to, we actually walked to a local village. And we bought noodles and CDs. We played pool. We had a couple of beers. And on the way back to camp, a car pulled up. And three women in it. Do you, you guys want to lift back to camp? We're going that way. And I'm with two guys, two tough guys. In fact, one of the guys I was with, um, I'll just say his name's D. If you're if you used to serve with me, his name's D. He's now in the special air service. D was with me and another guy, Alan, and two tough guys. And I thought, you know what? Yeah. And we got in. So they got in the back seat and I got in the front. And I was, there's no seats. And I was like, fuck's sake. So I got in the front. I think my dad knows this story. I got in the front and I tried to share the front seat. But part of my leg was on her groin. Now, we were about a mile away. So we were driving back to camp. And as we were driving back to camp, I remember feeling really, really nervous. And I said, stop the car. Stop the, what's, stop the, stop the car. I'm getting out. The girl's knee I was sitting on got an erection. And I wanted out of that car. I walked back to camp. I walked back to camp. I was, Have and you, you know seen what? Um, the hangover? I got store. slagged off. I got destroyed by the guys for about four months nonstop. Why? You've seen the hangover film, haven't you? Where? Oh my God. Well, there's three. The second Someone, one. <laughs> Someone <laughs> says, Blacksmith02 says, I remember that from the book. Yes, you see. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what the thing is? Say hello to everybody. How are you doing, dude? How was your snowboarding? Snowboarding was good. Oh, Snowboarding was good. Yeah, yeah. It's how the other half lives. Excuse me. Where's the snow in Spain? Oh yeah, Sierra uh, Nevada. El Sierra Nevada. It's not far from here. Um, you just head up towards Mal. Well, it's past Malaga, isn't it? Granada. It's Granada. It's mm. just a. Uh, it's eastbound of Granada. Yeah, it's a big About ski resort. Forty-five minutes drive. It's the one of the cheapest ski resorts in all of Spain, and it's only a three-hour drive away. Only a three hour drive. It's still very Only expensive. a three hour drive away. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. Drive. You, <laughs> you say only three hours. That when I was there, there were people coming from Brazil, from Portugal, from Ireland even. Mm. Because they don't mm. want to go to the Alps because they're paying like yeah, the upwards Alps of two hundred euros a day. Whereas the Sierra Nevada is like sixty. In three hours you can drive from Belfast to Dublin and back. Oh, and Spain back. is Spain is huge. Spain is huge. I mean, it, it would take me seven hours to drive to Madrid, top speed, and that's only oh, halfway up the country, isn't it? It's massive, Spain. Massive. Wonderful country, actually, for driving. What? Except There's killer only... lorries. What are, what are I get doing? very, very scared on Spanish roads sometimes because we've got a very little car, and I see the lorry in the distance, oh, and he's gaining oh, yeah. on me, and they come right up behind you, like in one of those horror films. So I'm not, and oh. when I get a hill, I think I'm going to outrun him, and then we're going downhill, and he's coming at me. I hate them. I'm going to be getting a, a Ford Ranger Raptor. So on the topic of small cars, how's that for you? What the hell is that? A Ranger Raptor, three liters of petrol. I have no idea what he's talking about. He comes in and says these sort of things. I know what and he's talking I, about. It's a, it's a, anybody in the chat know what a Raptor is? It's a, it's a four by four. Oh, Pickup. Yeah. American. It, right, mm. A raptor, right. Fiona, you he won't remember this. Do you remember uh, in the chat, who remembers a program called The Fall Guy? Do you remember <laughs> his kid with the eagle on the front? That's that's a today's raptor. Right, okay, okay. Do you remember You'll the, know who he's talking about because the same guy played the granddad in Ben 10. <laughs> Poor old, Lee, poor old Lee Majors. I love that guy. Bionic yeah, but, man. Poor guy. Well, if you look at what he drove in the day, it was a, it was like a pickup truck with a, a big eagle on the front. Well, that's that's like today's version is like a raptor of that. It's a new version of it, basically. Right. See, it? everyone right. everyone knows in the, in the in the chat. See that? F one fifty. Yeah. Ford Ranger is an Australian utility vehicle. Not a Ranger. Uh, like the base Ranger is completely different to the Raptor. I remember the Fall Guy Lee Majors. I know who doesn't. Oh, he was amazing. I loved Lee Majors. He was good, wasn't he? He was good. Or oh, why don't they do great TV shows like that anymore? We used to have really great, t loads of great TV shows like Bionic Man, Man from Atlantis. The Hulk. We had loads of those great shows. They just don't do them anymore. 
I know, I know. Um, because today's film, I mean, Hollywood's got awesome film producers, they really do, but I think everyone's being forced to go to the same direction or or fear of cancellation. So they're stopping it. Uh, <laughs> Who was Matthew... your childhood hero? Who? What, what did little Trevor watch? on a Saturday. And don't say Jim will fix it, because we know that's not true. I've seen I wrote that. In. Fiona. Hand on heart, I wrote in the Jim will fix it. I wrote in. So like most boys. We all wrote in. There was nothing more there, there was nothing more exciting than bouncing on Jimmy's knee while, while he smoked a cigar. Come um, closer, come closer, little boy. Yes, I remember. I know, but yeah, I mean my hero my hero's my dad. Well, of course, but I mean on TV. Batman, Saturday afternoon, Wurzel oh, Gummidge. I used to love that. Third, I watched Wurzel Gummidge. I'm going to be on. I was never into Doctor Who. Um, I, <laughs> fuck's sake. I like Jim will fix it. I like Philip Schofield. I like Gordon the Gopher. Everyone I watched was a, has turned out to be a fucking pervert. So I can't really go down that road, can I? Did you ever get a Jim will fix it badge? No one. I never got. I never. I never got in. Um, I, I even used to like watch. Badge. Do you know what I did like to watch though? Heart to heart, Tony Hart and Morph, the cartoon, the the plaster scene guy. I loved that. Yeah. Talking yeah. about old people TV shows. This it's way. it's really cool. We had very Fiona. good shows. With you guys. Fiona. I love. I used to like. Heart. I used to like Jim will fix it. He played with kids. I used to love Michael Jackson, best singer. He played with kids. I used to watch. I used to watch. Ready? Top of the Pops, hosted by John Leslie. Got done for rape. Oh, I'll switch over. John, watch John Leslie's Pops. totally innocent. He's he was found completely innocent. Doesn't matter. Okay. And I, yes. I used oh, God, to love I used to love watching. I bet you listen to Gary Glitter. I want to be in your game. Wasn't or a lacy or fucking serial killer, anyways. I actually. Yes. Rainbow. Oh God! It's, it's, it's in my head. It's in my head. I am the greatest. R. Kelly. I mean, everyone I used to like to listen to. Oh, yes, turned yes. It, turned it to be turned it to be rotten eggs, didn't they? Well, yeah. I always actually, even as a child, I found Uncle Jimmy dodgy. I thought Jimmy Savile was. I really wanted to be on his show. I really wanted him to fix stuff we for all me. did we i all really did. wanted to see what he'd fix for the kids but it made me cringe as a kid when he'd say come closer cut see what i've got in my magic buttons and my magic now chair. then now then now then i mean um, yeah <laughs> i mean people coming around about 50 i grew up and i saturday was fantastic friday and saturday i had top of the pops on which was brilliant i used to look i used to, i used to try and put a tape in and record it and then try and hit pause at the right time so next song would come on with a bit of salad tape and then I would go, I would watch Knight Rider, I would watch Airwolf, I would watch The A Team, I would watch Street Hawk. They were all, I mean, your Saturday night was amazing. I liked Sunday. I admit it. Sunday was shit. Sunday was always been shit. Take the high road. Sunday, Sunday was a day for Last my mum and dad. Something. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. Sunday, Sunday in, in our house was um, Crossroads, Emmerdale, Heartbeat. <laughs> Brookside. <laughs> yeah, I remember Brookside. I actually stayed up late the other night and I watched one of the TV shows he used to watch as a kid called Adventure Time. Are you familiar with it from Sebastian? Adventure Time? Adventure Time. It's cult. It's, it's a cartoon about the apocalyptic futuristic society of Ooh and the war of the mushrooms and they're all magical characters and it's messed up man i mean it's it's messed up on so many levels so i watched I actually watched adventure time and i thought this is sad because you're an adult now and you're you would not watch it with me would you you wouldn't entertain would you would you watch gravity falls diana b says wow. that was a little bit more kiddish diana, like, adventure time is like a good story to it yeah. Gravity Falls was more like kid oriented. Mm. Diana B said Nick Berry and Heartbeat was gorgeous. And I'm going to be honest yes. with you. I agree with her. He is. Who <laughs> <laughs> says, I love Adventure Time. It's so mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Netflix. 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 They were on LSD or mushrooms or something yes, like that. Yes, it's definitely someone who's been, perhaps, you know, someone like Prince Harry, I think, would watch Adventure Time. Definitely. Probably, yeah. Eating a few mushrooms. Definitely. Gareth Blur's on. Good to see you, Gareth. Gareth, you'll probably wonder why I'm drinking this beautiful little Chardonnay. We're celebrating. Like... Freedom Gareth. And liberty. Gareth, I've been cleared of all of all nonsense allegations. And, uh, I'm not Where's Graham like... gone? He's probably gone off to... Uh... Nick my stuff. <laughs> I don't know where he's, what stuff have you got? Have you got oh, a I'm of Sally. Food? I'm yeah. Sally. Well, that's that's why I'm I put Sally. this on. He wants to nick it. All oh, right. Do you remember that? I mean, they brought a pro when I was growing up. TV production companies wasted millions, and they went and built a little place, a show called El Dorado. <laughs> remember that bullshit? Oh yes. Do you the know? Bunny. There was a guy in there called Bunny. I heard, uh, saw a thing on a magazine, the lead guy in El Dorado was on the cover of a magazine and the headline was, he said, thank God it's over. It was awful, wasn't it, El Dorado? They, they, they didn't get the sound right. If they'd got the sound right and a little bit more of a storyline, it would have been great. But it just didn't quite gel. Foxy, I'd love to know what Foxy watched as a, a child because he's 22 same age as my age. daughter and two two years older than you. So I'm guessing Foxy would have watched Number Jacks, which was awful. That was a really irritating well, there you are. Kids Boobars. Show. Where have you been? The Boobars I loved. Where have you been? Well, I just I thought I'd give you some uh, airtime, you know. Mother son time. Since we haven't seen you for ages. Oh, I know. Uh, it's been, for your... We're yeah. very honoured that he's come to mix with us we because uh, you know. We're the riffraff. I've just been downstairs robbing all his gear. <laughs> That's what yeah. he said. He's yeah, just yeah. he's just been to a massive fancy. It's like me, it's like me Udi. I've I've robbed it off a US Marine. Well, we had some we had some US <laughs> Marines as guests in the house, and one of them was yeah. Yeah. Um, did you? So I am. I'm having that. Get in. Well, yeah, they were down from from not Moron Moron. Is Two big American bases here. There's one's um, Moron, uh, and what's the other one? Um, Rota. Rota, Rota bike it is. Yeah. I had a fly. Massive American bases. I had a fly in my Chardonnay. I had to get a fly in there. Uh, it gives well, it added flavour. Yeah. I quite like Chardonnay. What are you pulling, turning your nose up at Chardonnay for? He's not. I'm not turning my nose up. He's got a fly in it. That's why. I had a fly in it, yes. Yes. Yeah. Better than a slug. Yeah. My mate had a slug on his beer in, oh, in, God, in our yeah. back garden. Mr. Bond. Oh, I don't you know, know if anyone... Dad... I think... I'm not sure if my parents are watching. They probably are. But what my dad... I've seen him do. I don't know if he's done it lately. But he would get um, tins of Guinness, cut them in half with the Guinness, and put them in the garden. And all the slugs come off the plants and go to the Guinness. Right. Even, yeah. yeah. This one went to our friend's beer. We 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 have, we're all getting pissed in the garden, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, my my video is coming later tonight. We've, we've got the jacuzzi. Oh, the jacuzzi's finally. Thank God. Anyway, oh, done. Is it done? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're all drinking beer, and it's on the it's on the side there, and we're all chatting away, having a great time. Anyway, this slug crept up his glass, and it was like laying on the top like this. <laughs> oh God! And uh, he was just chatting away, being himself, you know, as he does. Anyway, he picked the glass up like that and put his lips around the slug. <laughs> and it, it, I mean, that was funny enough on its own, but his reaction to the slug yeah. was like... Well, everybody's seen Ben on crying our, with on our channel. Ben, crying. ben is such a big girl's blouse. It's Mr. Bond, friend. we call him. You saw him when we were in London. We call him Christmas. that because he's the furthest thing from James Bond ever. And I mean, he just he got a load of leaves. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. It was hilarious. It was an Austin Powell joke. At, the, oh. at first, you know, I mean, we, we, we just developed and we just called him Mr. Bond in the end. <laughs> right. I heard I heard a rumour today. Um, I heard this rumour from an actor, from a proper actor, that Killian Murphy is being put 
forward for the role of James Bond. Who is Killian Murphy? He is the guy who did Oppenheimer, Irish guy. He also did Peaky Blinders, the guy at the front. I have seen I a bit of Peaky Blinders, but I, I'm not familiar with the guy. Correct me if I'm wrong, though, but in the last Bond film, didn't Bond die at the end? He got nuked. He did, yeah. Yes. So what's it like Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty on the fort waterfall? He, he didn't die. Well, they'll do another. Oh, it's an earlier, an earlier. Yeah, yeah. 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 They'll, 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 they always find a way the around. Broccoli, the Broccoli sisters have more fun, don't they, than actually MI6. I yeah. couldn't believe they killed James off. I only saw it recently on the telly and my mouth was wide open. I was like, oh my God, they can't kill can't James. Kill Bond. It's outrageous. <laughs> what would Ian Fleming say? Uh, maybe he killed him off in one of the books. I've never read a Fleming book. Well, I mean, I thought Daniel Craig did a good job. He did. Um, he wasn't as suave and sophisticated as Piers Brosnan in his day, if I'm honest. Piers Brosnan was... I think the worst one was George Lesenby. He was shit as a Bond. Timothy mm. Dalton was Timothy Dalton was pretty shite. It's um, Timothy, it's a strange one because he's absolutely brilliant in anything else. He's a very good actor, very good but actor. He was but rubbish he was wasn't, wasn't, wasn't for him, was it, really? No. No, I mean... Like my favourite Bond. What's, who's your favourite Bond? Mine's Sean Connery. Honestly, my favourite yeah. Bond of all time... There's no right or wrong answer. My, my favourite one is Roger Moore. <laughs> me too. Uh, me too. Octopussy. No. Yeah. Octopussy, my favourite one. No, sorry, I don't agree. He had humour. <laughs> That's what I liked about Roger Moore. He had a lot of humour. Connery, Connery, awesome. Connery was awesome, but he he didn't have the humour. Oh, time. come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry, Roger. It's Moore. because you're 10 years younger than me. Vote in the comments. Who was well, the I, best James your, Bond? There's no right or wrong answer. Who is your favorite gonna, Roger James Bond? Please put it in the comments now. I'm going to yeah. throw this out here just to cause controversy, but I think there should be a female Bond. <sighs> I, I get the impression that because he had a daughter, that that will be the future. And if he is. If there is a female Bond, she's not allowed to be white. No, um, not having no, a... I, don't, I mean, I, I, I don't. I'm on your channel, so I don't know whether to say anything. But because we have Netflix, you I see you things, and I'm not, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. But I mean, and I mean, this is just a, a vague example, you know, like perhaps a, a Henry VIII is a man of colour with a massive afro, as an example. Anne Boleyn with a huge afro, oh, very much that? a person of colour. I don't understand yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII were not people of colour. No, and it almost implies that slavery never happened, that uh, people of colour were always in positions of power and privilege, which is not true. And it sort of rewrites history, and kids in a hundred years might believe that shit and think, what? well, like the Holocaust, the Holocaust deniers, they might say there'll be slavery deniers. There was no slaves because Netflix show all these dukes and kings and queens that were people of colour. Mind you, you kicked off about the female um, Doctor Who. Oh, I thought yeah. she was well, good, good actually. Yeah. I thought... Well, I, I, I thought she was good. I thought she did really well in the past. Slavery, slavery happened... Uh, Slavery happened against every race and religion. It was the ones that had... Now, you've got to... I get it. I understand that uh, Jamaica and all these countries want slavery... We can't even say that word. Reparations? Can't say that's that. Anyway, idea. but who did they think took the slaves from Africa to the <laughs> coast? It was, other, it was other people of colour that took these people yeah. to the beaches and oh, yeah. sold them to ships in English and... and, and, and oh. The British and the, the Empire. Slavery has gone on since ancient Rome and the ancient Greeks. You know, I didn't even know, but the Barbary pirates came to England and they stole people from villages and took them back to Africa to be slaves. You know, everyone's been at it, there bang is, at it. And, you know, it's only current, recently that we've said no yeah, to slavery. There is current slavery today. There is. No, and they would do better talking about that. But I get what you mean, Trevor. I think yeah, rather yeah. than reparations or money, what should happen is a true historical documentation must be protected of it and not changed. 
we down at this neck of the woods, we had the Barbary pirates. Yeah. They would steal uh, white people and they would go to Cornwall and um, steal people from Cornish villages. So there's an island, there's an island between Cornwall and Wales and it's just off the coast there. Yes. I can't remember the name of the island. Wally but, did a whole but video But they landed on it. there and that was their base and from there they'd go and attack villages yeah. and, and just grab, kidnap people. Yes. Take All them right. back to this island and then take them away. Bear Grylls, own, Bear Grylls owns an island in that facility now though. Does he? Does yeah. he bless him? I love that guy. I just love that guy. I wasn't keen on him at first, but we used to watch him all the time, didn't we? Bear Grylls, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we used to binge watch Bear Grylls because he, he was just outrageous, eating eating horrible, creepy. I mean, all the, all the decent information he gives to everybody. Right, I watched out the window because all people want to watch is eating, eating disgusting cockroaches. I, I, I watched him uh, do a show, and during the show, it was live. During the show, he went from being Bear Grylls to Benedict Cumberbatch because he, he got stung by hornets and his whole face just swore. I remember That's that right. Man. Yeah, yeah, he got, yeah, yeah, he got yeah, yeah, stung yeah, right yeah, there, yeah. and his whole face came out. He got <laughs> took down by a bee. Poor guy. And, and the one yeah. where he has a caterpillar or something, and then he had diarrhea halfway up a waterfall. Oh, God. My mate my <laughs> mate was on the Special Forces course, right? And I, I was laughing. I said, did you ever eat a cockroach? And he went, yeah, yeah, I did, actually. I said, what did it taste like? And he went, don't ask. It was awful. <laughs> I would I would eat a, I wouldn't Have eat you a... ever eaten a cockroach, Trevor? Have I? No. I've never had a reason to, if I'm honest. What's the most disgusting thing you've ever had to eat on a survival course? Um, I've tried different types of snails and sl not slugs, but different types of snails and caterpillars and, and slugs and diff different types of things, but silkworms. And th I've tried different things like that, but um, I've had things presented to me, and I've just went, "Take it away, fuck's sake! I've got rations with me." But um, I've never been in a situation where I've needed. To do that. Now, I did, um, when I was in the jungle, I, I did catch fish, not big fish, but fish. And the way I did that was, uh, which I didn't know, because it, it's you're constantly learning. You're always learning. Um, uh, yeah. We used to have, do you remember the, uh, the green, like silver, it looked like green silver foil biscuits, fruit biscuits and biscuits brown you got in your rations? A, B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, well, those. Yeah, so, compact, right, okay. talking about, yeah. What I would do with those is, I would, <coughs> before I opened them, I would smash them so they were all broken. I would open them. Now, th this, ready? I had a bucket. Don't know where I got a bucket from? Find a bucket. The bucket had a hole in it, clearly. So what I did was, I got um, the biscuits. I put them inside the bucket, right? Tied string to the bucket, right? Now, I put a bag, the bag over the front and the back, and you put a hole in it. Now, this is something I only learned when I was out there. I did this in Brunei in the river. It's quite fast flowing. Threw the bucket in. Left it. Now, fish have a good smelling sense. They smell the biscuits. And they fish can't swim backwards, can they? They yeah. swim forwards. They all go, they're only, now they're not really big fish, let's be honest. They're, they're about this. So, yeah, yeah probably about, yeah. probably a good mass of 12 inches, right? So, they swim into the bucket. And then you have them. They don't get out. You then have them. Now, what I did here, do you remember the old um, cookers? Like you, metal, you fold yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right? Hex now, this block. sounds weird. This yeah. is what I did. I got four hexi cookers, opened up four of them with little prongs, opened up four, yeah, 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 took yeah. out the hexi blocks. I got D10 wire. Know the D10 wire? No. It's like you can use it for radio. It splits into two ways. It, like black and tan. Black and tan. Okay. Right. And I wrapped it around the four, crisscross wrapping it, and then I lit the hexi blocks. Now, when I lit the hexi blocks, it burnt all the plastic off the wire. Okay, so you left with the copper, yeah. So straight away, I've got a fucking grill. Get my fish, got it, fish on the grill. Right. Easy. Right. I know I've had a shallow life, haven't I? There you go. No. I was I... amazed, you know, those plastic water bottles, you cut them in half, turn, they'd turn them around and push them back into the... The bottle yeah. of fish swim in and they can't find the hole to get out. It's so, amazing. That is so stupid. How, how stupid a fish. You know, <laughs> they can't get back out. They, they go in and they can't get back out. They're very, they're very tiny though, aren't they? You know, you need a lot of fish well, to survive. You put a fish in a goldfish bowl, 
when it first goes in there, it goes fucking amazing and goes around in a circle and goes fucking amazing and then goes around again and goes fucking amazing. That's bollocks about this, right? Not having any memory because the minute you take the lid off the tank, you know, to, to crumble the flakes in, they're all there like that going food, 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 so they can remember from yesterday when you fed them last, can't they? Fish tank, not challenger. You're talking about a fish tank, yeah? <laughs> I had a fish tank when I was a kid, of course. Yeah, we and all the fish, remember, they were about to be fed. And I fed them too much, and they had, like, really long turds hanging yeah. out of their bones, and, like, then they all died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. The 70s. There's a lot of people in the Who remembers the turtles? Everyone wanted a turtle, didn't they? <coughs> they, they weren't turtles, they were terrapins. Terrapins, yeah. The teenage Ninja Turtles. Anyway, you go to the pet shop and they've got loads of terrapins. They're, oh, yeah, the kids want terrapins. They want ter They're the vicious little bastards. They bite. Anyway, they get too big and they stink. And they're, they're, they're too big for the tank. And Dad used to go, don't worry, I'll get rid of it. Throw it in the river. And they, 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 they bred like wildfire. Well, yeah, where do you People, think? The country file was going mad. John Craven was like, well, he's off his sets, wasn't he? I remember, I don't know if you know this, but you know when you go to the cinemas and every so often a new movie comes out, it's a big, thick cardboard cutout of like James Bond or whatever it is, whatever Star Wars you see. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. When my son was growing up, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was hitting the cinema. And I went into the cinema in Colchester. Um, it was on the high street, basically. There was a cinema on the high street. And I went in there and, I, and they were selling, um, no, there was a raffle. There was a raffle. You could enter the raffle, you put a bid in, and whenever the movie was over, and the movie the movie wasn't center stage anymore, you could buy the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cutouts, all four of them. It, I mean, this thing was about seven foot height, by about six foot wide. It was massive. And I remember, you didn't, you didn't. I, I didn't give a shit. I put a bid in for about 70 or 80 quid, walked away, and about two weeks later, I got a phone call, you've won the raffle. So oh my when I... <laughs> No, this is true. My son was at um, he was young, so he was at I think he was at nursery. Or so he went to the nursery in Colchester beside the beside the um, beside the Naffy really in Colchester. So anyway, so we went and got it and brought it home, and I had it in his room. Luba went mad because he couldn't move in his room. It was massive. <laughs> I bet he loved it. He did. Yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we got that's... Ben all these teenage mutant ninja turtles. Oh didn't we? yeah, that and we got him a BB gun, you know, the five little plastic balls. And uh, finished up at Christmas, we we stood them all up on the on the on top of the mantle. Why are you using sitting. the word we? You did all of this. You shot all his ninja turtle well, toys. Ben shot them as well. He broke his little breastplate. <laughs> <laughs> they were only little figurines. They were mag magnetic joints. I've still always arms and legs up. You've still got past, yeah. like you could bend them all. It was like a little magnetic ball in all, and you could put them in different positions. Sebastian still got them. Doesn't play with them, but below below his bed in his mum's house, he's got, he's got the ones, right? He's got the uh, the bus, the teenage mutant ninja turtle bus. He's got the bikes, all the different things that fire things. He's got it all. Awesome. Ben was into Ben Ten. Do you remember Ben Ten? Yes, Sebastian. Hey! Benji's he turned into a monster or something. Benji's whatever. got four Omnitrixes. Four. Jesus, I'm trying to catch up here. <coughs> Mariah B. Remember them? That was uh, Doctor Who. They're yeah. all in the bilge, I think, all the old toys. Yeah. I've got a clean We most of them away, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I give, um, we give stuff away as well. And I think we all do. <laughs> you pass it on to family, don't you? You pass it on to kids yeah. and things. The owner's friend at work got a little boy, and we gave him yeah. all the Thomas the Tank engines. <laughs> and, oh, God. You know, yeah, the little yeah. double A battery in there, and, that, and he was made up. Loved it. Absolutely loved them. Well, when they grow up. they were expensive at the time. When they, they grow up, generation. you want to get rid of it. It's a bit like when your kids come home and they've drawn a picture at school, and you're like, yeah, that's great. And you screw it up and put it in the bin when they're not looking. Otherwise, the house. That's terrible. What a terrible weather. You keep the odd one, <laughs> don't you? You keep the odd one in the scrap book. Most of them because they forget, they forget. Did you have a um? I spent a lot of in that in you, bitch. <laughs> Sorry. I always, 
I always wanted a motorbike growing up, but my my parents wouldn't let me have one. They said I was a fucking lunatic, and there was no way they would let me have a, a motorbike. I can imagine. You well, mean I, you never had a motorbike? No, um, I've never had a. I've I've driven motorbike. Right. When I was working in Belfast at Seven Royal Irish Malone Road, um, I lived in my own little flat, and I sure. My mom and dad helped me put it together. And then a soldier who was going through a tough time asked, could he come in and share it with me? And I went, yeah. But at the weekends, there was about five or six soldiers in there. And it was a party flat. And I just remember, I just remember, um, it was a lovely little place, actually. But I remember people coming in and just putting crates of beer in the kitchen. Crates of beer in the kitchen. Now, this will be strange. I also remember one time sitting in my living room and I went into the kitchen to grab a beer. And when I went in the kitchen to grab a beer, I noticed there was a gun sitting beside the beer. And I was like, and then I looked around the kitchen, my eyes were like this. And I noticed, I noticed who was in the kitchen. And I was like, shit, shit, shit. And I had that, I, I, I had that two or three months later, I had to get rid of the flat because there were certain people coming to the flat thinking it was a safe haven for them to do what they wanted to do. And I got rid of them. I also remember moving when I lived in Ballybean, my dad will tell you, my mom and dad are watching anyway. I moved to Ballybean and I was living there and I was living facing the shops. I can't remember the name of the shops in Ballybean. It wasn't the ones at the square. It was the ones down at the valley. They called it the valley shops. But I remember when I moved in and uh, again, I got the place up and up and uh, running. I lived in the bottom flat, but never live in a bottom flat in Ballybean. People can knock your window. They'll keep you awake all night, the kids. Oh, right. Stupid. Anyway, but the, I remember doing things in my front of my living room. And th this is the fact. I turned around. Fucking Michael Stone just walked straight in and sat down in my sofa. Who's Michael that? Stone. Do you remember the guy who threw hand grenades at the IRA funeral and got locked up? Yes. Yeah. Him. He was a cult hero in Ballyvane. He walked in, he sat down, and he didn't know who I was, but I was new. And I, he was into all his art and doing paintings and all this here stuff. And then I treated everyone. Anyway, I was like, wow. Uh, and then he sat there and he started questioning me. What's your name? What are you doing here? Where are you from? And I was like, fuck me. And then it just so happened my brother-in-law came around. I remember. Uh, Joy Earl says, I remember, Trevor. And um, I never said, I, listen, I treat everyone equally until they give me a reason not to. That's the truth. And my yeah. brother-in-law came in and he went, all right, Michael, what the fuck are you doing here? Can you vouch for him? It's my brother-in-law. Oh, no drama. Shoot my hand and left. Fuck me. I think, what the fuck? Was he the guy at the, the, the funeral of the three that got shot in Gibraltar? No. Um, Michael Stone is associated with uh, Milltown Cemetery, where he threw grenades and stuff and started shooting people at an IRA funeral. And I remember that. I remember there was that. a few incidents at IRA funeral. Were they have the balaclavas on? They fire the guns in there. I don't think. I, I, if I remember, um, I don't think he wore a balaclava. He just didn't. No, no, no. I think it was a British Army funeral. Yeah. I remember anyway, a few there nasty were a lot incidents. Of, there yeah. were a lot yeah. of. Uh, it's a complicated subject, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's a so fact. Nice. Mm. Unbelievable. Yeah, that was that was. I remember there was one funeral where there was a guy who just pulled a gun out and started shooting at people in, in in the cemetery. That was Michael Stone. And then they were all chasing him. And there was another one where there was a couple of corporals in a car. They were British Army, and they they got that was, and, and killed, didn't they? Somewhere. That was. Um, I remember that funeral that was. That was Corporal Derek Hughes. No, that was Corporal Derek Hughes and David Woods, uh, signalers uh, who drove into a drove into an out of bounds area where there was an IRA funeral taking place, and and then unfortunately, unfortunately, that that was the end of them. Unfortunately, mm. sad, sad. Yeah, 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 I'm glad that's all um, finished. So, Hopefully. I know. I mean, this is a fact. I went home uh, last year with Gwen. Uh, we went in and we stayed at my mum's and dad's place. And I remember my dad going, why don't you go into Belfast with Gwen? 
And I'm like, what? Go on, we'll drop you off outside the merchant hotel. And I'm like, that's an out of boundary. I would want to go there. My dad went, that's in the past. You want to see it now? I've never been to that part of town because it was a scary place for soldiers at the time or even yeah. those from my life. But um, I went there. We, we, they dropped, my mom and dad dropped me off at the Merchant Hotel, which is beautiful, beautiful. And um, I went for a walk down that way. And the bars outside and the proper live music outside. Every place. It was amazing. I loved it. It was fantastic. It was a part of Belfast, which I never thought I'd ever be able to see and enjoy. And I thought, I think, yeah. I think, the, place, I think the place is amazing now. Mm. Well, think about it. I mean, Belfast is an amazing place. You know, I mean, it could be so much better if people didn't have like insecurities and stuff. You know what I mean? No, no. I, I, I've, I think... never seen, I've never seen anything like the peace wall that's just, just there. And even to this day, do, do, correct me if I'm wrong, do they still lock the gates at night? No, no, that's all done. It's all done and dusted. All done and dusted. Are the wall is still there. Is the wall still there? There's there's part of it still there. It's it's historic, isn't it? Part of it's still there, but um it's I mean you'll always have a little bit of divide. You you're always gonna have it's I mean, let's be honest. Um the English you're always gonna hate the Scottish. There's no wall there, they're always gonna hate each other for some reason. Mm -hmm. But um but I mean Catholics and Protestants in Belfast get on. They get on. It's the loyalists and republicans that hate each other. And it, you're you're always going to have that sort of you're always going to have that sort of faction. And I think as as the years go on, uh, mums and dads now uh, don't do that shit. They don't go don't go near this. Don't go near it, everything's quite it, it's working yeah, quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll never be perfect. Well, I grew up in, I grew up in Liverpool, and which was like you know the capital of Ireland, didn't it? You, you've got your Catholics and your Proddies. You've got everyone all mixed in together, and everyone seems to get on. I mean, you get the odd punch up here and there, you know what I mean? But generally yeah. speaking, everyone got on. I know. I no, mean, I never, I never look at any, any sort of major Belfast, Belfast is the only place where I've ever been. I've been to many cities. haven't been to them all, but I've been to lots of cities in the UK. And Belfast yeah, is yeah. the only place where you've got into a taxi. And he went, where are you going? Uh, I'm going to East Belfast. Well, I'm not going that way. Yeah. And you've got to get out and go to a different taxi, honestly. Just get out, just get out and get another taxi, yeah, yeah. No, I've never been to Belfast. I don't only have my flight to I've never been there for real. But, it's um, good that things are better it's, now. Yeah, yeah, for sure, mm. for sure. Mm. I, mean, I mean, the amount of things that I'd love to stay here. Really, hasn't it? Yeah. In, in yeah, I mean, there's loads of things. I mean, do you know what? I've spoken to so many people and got... And gained so much knowledge from different people that have experienced lots of things that I'd love to be able to sit here and just throw all, throw it all out about about things which we all knew about, but it turned out to be a fact. I mean, Martin McGuinness is dead now, isn't he? Um, but um, his number one who who's the number one guy? Jerry Adams. He was the political guy for Sinn Féin, wasn't no. he, for years and years? I, no. Is he still there? I don't no, think Jerry, he is. Jerry Adams has retired. It's um... Jerry Adams is now uh, a Sinn Féin politician who lives in the south of Ireland. Uh, it's a girl called Michelle, to my oh, the shame, I call Blonde lady, think. blonde lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah blonde yeah, yeah, yeah. lady. And then there's Mary Lou in the Republic yeah. of Ireland. Michelle, yeah. I can't think what her name is. But yeah. uh, No, Jerry Adams retired he stood down quite a few years ago he did he did and there will always be a target on his back that's probably why he's best being a politician and i don't mean a, i don't mean a target on his back from loyalists there's a target on his back from republicans which is the side he looked after i think um if i'm honest i think jerry adams was probably the best employee the british army ever had I never knew that. I never knew that because they always dubbed his voice, didn't they? Yeah. They said he's yeah. not allowed to speak. So he had an act. He always said an actor's voice. Yeah. He was mimicking yeah. every single word he said. And you think, well, what's the point in doing that? And that just gave him massive street cred in America because they well, said this guy is so controversial that the British government won't let him speak. Well, the thing is, um, Jerry and Martin for many years were uh, the two top men in, in negotiations with the British government. They were. Uh, 
Um, I remember, yeah. Uh, Sinn Féin were, um, well, were, were put, Sinn Féin was put together to be the political side of the Irish Republican Army. They were. That's what their mm -hmm. job was to negotiate. Yeah. Um, and they did a lot of their a lot of their negotiation through a magazine called Anfla Black, which was a Republican propaganda magazine. And there was many times that magazine would advertise, um, and they would put the prices of. If anyone can kill a paratrooper or a Royal Marine, the price is five hundred pound or six hundred pound. They would they would actively advertise what it, what what they would pay Republicans to kill members of the British Army and the police service and things. The higher up the rank you were, the more money they got. But um, for many many years, uh, Jerry and Martin um, were frowned upon with the 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 Irish Republican Army Council. They're, they're, they have a council where they all meet different levels. Uh, brigadiers and things and uh, it was always frowned upon because a lot of information was ending up with special branch and a lot of information was being uh found out and things things weren't taking place so th they were always under scrutiny of are they touts and um we'll never know if they were touts i just think in my own opinion that um they possibly were mm. It's obviously a very complicated. I don't know. I don't know. Michelle O'Neill, Joy, yeah. Joy said in the comments, she's called yeah, Michelle. Michelle mm. Yeah. Yeah. Another complicated subject, you know. Yeah. Mm. It's good that <sighs> things are, are calmed down yeah, a lot yeah, because yeah, I remember yeah. when I was yeah. a teenager, it was really. I remember watching a film about Michael Collins, you know, going back to the 1960s. Because my grandmother, on my father's side, was was from Ireland. Yeah, and she, she was actually around the uh, the post office when it kicked off, and she was only sixteen or something like that. She was terrified, absolutely mm. terrified. You know, I mean, so she obviously came from Ireland. That, that, that side of the family came from Ireland, and grandparents on the other side all <laughs> came from Scotland. So, you know, we're all on it together, really, aren't we? We just got to learn to get on. Someone says, "What do you think?" Me. Thatcher, someone, some, sorry, Trevor, someone called Carla has asked, what did you think of Maggie Thatcher, Trevor? Carla, that's hi, a, Carla. That's a big, that's a big subject, isn't it? <clears throat> I, my views on Maggie Thatcher is, I think she was fantastic. I hold her in high esteem. I think she was one of the very few politicians I've ever heard of that would not negotiate with terrorism. Um, she was the one that gave the order for the SAS to go into the Iranian embassy siege. She was the one that gave the order, we, we won't negotiate with Argentina, the Falklands are British. She had balls bigger than any trans woman these days. Anyway, um, but um, listen, I remember going on leave. I can't remember, was it 97, 97, 96, 97? Might have been around about 97, 98. I was on leave and my mum and dad would crack up because I would go out for a night out uh, and come back two days later. Uh, but the thing is, I would, I went into Belfast one night with... Uh, Two two friends, um, won't mention her name, um, but uh, went into Belfast with them, and we went to the Shankle Road, which is a huge law in Australia. And we went to the Shabin. For those of you that are watching, you, you know what I mean. We went to the Shabin, which was behind a garage. It was a disused garage, and we went in there, and you paid a couple of quid. You went in. There was, um, if I remember rightly, there was UVF Ulster Volunteer Force bouncers on the door. Terrorist, well, they're on the door, and you went in and you could buy tins of beer. And in there, there was a load of people uh, off their bollocks on drugs. And me and my mates would have a few beers. The women in there were beautiful, and we, we went in there for that, clearly. But there were seats around the wall. And I remember one night we had a few beers and we were drinking all. We, we were we were um, doing that thing where you um, you shake the can, you burst, you try and drink it all down, and we're doing all that stuff. But I was about 25 at the time, dickhead. Dick, still am a dickhead. But, um, there was, one night in there was one night in particular that scared me and I never went back again. Right. I was in one night and all of a sudden the lights, all of a sudden there was a proper DJ, proper DJ there. The music stopped and the lights went on and everyone moved away off the dance floor. And my dog, Johnny Adair, who was the commander of the Ulster Volunteer Force, came walking in. I remember seeing him on TV he was dangerous i remember seeing one and i just I, my eyes were like what the fuck and i remember standing looking at my mates and my mate grabbed me and went just shut the fuck up say nothing johnny out there walked straight in with about four or five of his mates behind him and they were massive 
and they then I heard a woman screaming, don't, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And they grabbed this guy and they put him in the middle of the dance floor and they beat the fuck out of him with baseball bats in front of everyone. And then Johnny just said, if any of you are caught joyriding and stealing people's fucking cars, you'll get the same. And then just left and dragged him away. And I remember just being pure white and going, shit. And then we didn't even finish your beer. We just wait till they were gone. And then we just left. I never went back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, scary. scary. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, scary times. But you see, see, when you're young, you you turn up to bars that you don't know and, and you think you'll fit yeah. in. And, and, now, don't get me wrong. That guy, no, I, I will admit this. Later on, Johnny Johnny Mad Dog Adur went to jail and done many, many years jail. So he, he he has been in and out of prisons and he was dealt with. But um, the power, the power that that guy had uh, in front of people, the intimidation was just scary. Yeah. Different yeah. times. Different times. Yeah. I'm glad we've moved on. But I, it, I suppose it fits the times and the circumstances and you kind of had to have been there. That's the thing. It's all very well for someone like me who lived yeah. in England. I, I never wasn't there. I don't know. I don't understand. Didn't the, bomb, didn't the bomb go off near your house or, in a bin? We yeah, yeah, we had the bomb go off. In, but I mean, we had the Brighton Hotel. There was mm. the the Docklands in London, Manchester. It was quite scary in England actually because you never knew where something might go off, and we knew. If it was IRA, it would be a big thing, you know, a big thing. It was really, really quite scary. There was, there was a time when Belfast was evil, evil. I mean, it was, it was everywhere. Uh, ordinary people, no, was ordinary people were scared. I remember playing it in front of my mum and dad's house playing football, and then I'd see a massive puff of smoke about four, five, no, about six, seven miles away, and then you'd hear a massive bang. I mean, bombs going off in town, and you were like, Shit. like in the city centre from where you were. Uh, I could not from where I lived in Ballybean. Um, we were safe, clearly. Uh, there was no trouble where I was, never any trouble. I mean, where I grew up was fantastic. I, I could get up at eight in the morning, go out, come back at 10 at night, no issues. Um, pedophiles and all that shit hadn't came to Ballybean, they were scared of it. Um, terrorism, mm. terrorism in Northern Ireland kept other nationalities away. They would not come to Belfast. They wouldn't dare. I mean, they yeah, just wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you you were sort of near near um, the airport, yeah. But to Georgie Best Airport, south and the on the south bank. Uh, today, my parents live. Um, Where's Bali Bean? Where's Bali Bean in Bally, relation to the centre? Bali Bean. Bally Bean is. Right, when you leave Belfast and you're heading towards Newton Arts, Ballybean is past, it's, it's, it's basically it's Dundonald, which is um, probably about three miles further on than Stormont. You know that big white building, Stormont? Uh, uh, yeah, but I mean, it, it, from the centre of Belfast, where the shipyard is, oh, is that uh, east? Uh, east? Uh, the west? Ballybean, but I, I can't remember the exact distance, but I think Ballybean's about eight miles away from Belfast. Or to the to the west, towards the maze and, and Lisbon. Ah, uh, oh God, you're going to get my my burns wrong. I'm going to. Say it's. Uh, I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head, mate. And I'm not going to make. I know the estuary. Myself. I know the estuary comes in. Yep. To the main city, <laughs> and then you've got the airport to the south. Right, and it's then got... Bally being south. Then it's no, it's, not, south. it's not south yeah. Belfast. It's a way a fuck. I don't know, Graham. I'm not going to put my, my foot yeah. up and going. It's I, I, I don't know about it. I, I don't know. Sorry, mate. I'm, I was just. I just thought you'd like give you enlightenment. Cause sorry. Well, you're my a navigate, pilot. My navigating, navigating heads come on now. I'm just thinking like. Uh, well, where's you're that good in relation to Belfast? Well, we know Can you're you good. Give us a GPS reference, please. Oh, shut up. <laughs> we know you're yeah, good at nerd. flying over. Why don't you fly? <laughs> why don't you fly over the fucking place then? Yeah. I will. I will. <laughs> I've done it loads of times, mate. I've been in and out of Georgie Best loads of times. I'm getting a bit cold now. It's getting cold now. Anyway, Trevor, you've gone over your hour, mate. You're at 
I know. Minutes now. I'll not want to hear the minute. Gail Gail Saint Ballybean is going east. Yes, east. The east from Belfast. You'll be in the sea, surely. <coughs> Graham, we're talking a couple of miles. That fucking four thousand kilometers. Southeast, southeast, or northeast. It's got to be on the south bank, hasn't it? It's got to be. From what you're telling me, I don't know. I don't. I'm, I'm asking a question. I don't know. You're I'm asking no too expert. many fucking questions. I've never Graham. been to Belfast, right? <laughs> I don't know. So from from the shipyard and the estuary, you're south east, yeah, Bollybean. Probably, yeah, yeah. I'd say that, yeah. Off the top, I don't know, Graham. East to the I right, know. west is to the left, yeah. I know which way a compass fucking works. <laughs> I'm trying to work out. I'm trying to work out. With my back against the sun and the shadow falls due north. I don't fucking know, Graham. I can't remember. Hey, you got that right. You got that right, mate. <laughs> you look at your watch and see what time it is and see where the sun is. That's brilliant. I love navigation. It's great. Do you know I can fly all around Scotland without without a map? That's excellent. And I'll find my way most, around. Most normal people don't do that. I never look most at my watch. Most normal people don't do that. I'm just a nerd. How many people look at their watch when you're walking around and check where the sun is? I, I never do that. I never I never leave the house without a <laughs> looking at those things called sun, a sundial. I've got a sundial watch. <laughs> I haven't got a watch on tonight, actually. I don't. I haven't got one. I have. You're just not prepared, mate. You're just not ready. <laughs> I said a sundial watch. It's just a dis discus with a stick in the middle, a spike. It's true. Well, if, you, I, if you hammer a stick in the ground. Oh, for God's sake! Everybody right, goes when, when the, the shadow goes is. north, that's midday. Actually, Graham, if you're going to be pedantic. Your stick that you hammer in the ground has to be over a meter in length for that to actually work. No, does it? No, it doesn't. What it you doesn't. do is, what you do is, you put it's your stick in the different ground. Direction, isn't it? If it's shorter, if you put your stick in the ground and then you look where the shadow is, you put a stone where the first shadow is. Then you come back over an hour, and then where the second shadow is, because it would have moved, you put a stone where the second shadow is. You then put your left foot on the first stone. Your right foot on the second stone, and where you're facing should be due north. You've been on the sundial course, haven't you? Fifteen <laughs> degrees, mate. Fifteen degrees every hour. It's just it's just navigation courses I've done in the past. Navigation is very interesting. I already fucked up once. That's coming across from Canada. To well, I got lost tonight. I got lost tonight everything. in Morrison's. What? I, what? I, I, I got hey. lost in Morrison's cream. I don't. I, I I thought it was Safeways, but I landed in Morrison's anyway. Listen, I've got Google Apps on my phone. If I need to know where I am, I'll look at that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find the ball in. I'm gonna He's land gonna my find helicopter. Exactly where you I'm land my helicopter next to the ball in. I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> um, I know it's in one bridge somewhere. I, I was in the Berlin today, and it was filled with people there. Uh, uh, the Rotary Club, you know, the local businesses. No. So all the guys and girls that own the local businesses, uh, well, the Rotary Club is all male. I'll get that straight. They are. The wives go there and have a little wine and stuff. But sometimes I feel like just banging their fucking heads together. I'm thinking, you're all paying through the nose for ground rent for your shops in Woodbridge. And there's 11 charity shops there that pay fuck all. Stop giving charity shops because that's why your rent's high, you dickheads. But no one seems to be able to, no one can use their brain anymore. I love it charity is. shops. I do. That's I, my I, thing. I've had some amazing stuff out of charity shops, mate. Tell Unfortunately, you. we don't really have them down here. No, we don't. I do used them. to use them all the time. I love them. I love them. We don't get them here. Every time we go to Brighton, we blather the charity yeah. shops. You know, we do it. It's well, let me great. tell you something. Charity begins at home. If you have anything left, then give to charity. But do not. I would not give a penny to charity if I was struggling. There's no point. It's just stupid. Mm, mm. I, I prefer to go shopping in a charity shop than give money to a charity or participate in something. Yeah, I prefer yeah, to participate yeah. in something. There was a really good one, wasn't there, in Brighton? The Mayors. Oh, the Mayors was amazing. Oh, People used to... You, furniture, bar. They bought... She used to be a barmaid in this pub called The Pilot. Oh, God, yeah. 
Right next to is where we live. Is that where she met Hugh Graham? Is that where she met no, Graham? No, 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 no. <laughs> the pilot, as in like a boat pilot, you know. Anyway, anyway, this Emmaus, Emmaus, the the, the church, the, the charity shop, they finished up buying the pub out. They bought the pub off the brewery and turned it into a charity shop because they were making so much money. I'm not surprised. Unbelievable. That was the worst pub I ever worked in in my life. Oh. I bought that. I bought that in a charity shop, and we. I love it. that. That's the Queen's Crown, isn't it? it? Yeah. Well, during 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 the coronation, all the rest of the stuff, I walked past. I was walking down Woodbridge, and it's at the very top of Woodbridge. Um, there's a shop on the left, I, the British Heart Foundation, actually. I okay. Walked past it, I walked past it, and I seen two of these with a little lovely blue and black silk tiny bag sitting on a shelf. And I went, oh, they look lovely. And I just walked in and I says, um, and then somebody bought one. I went, can I have that brooch? Yes. I think I paid about, I think I paid about pound fifty for that. I've had some I amazing stuff out of I the I love your jacket. Shop. I love your jacket. It is quite suave, isn't it? It's a bit Bondified. It's very James Bond. Is that a tuxedo? It is. It's a dinner jacket, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Looks like <laughs> It's quite a posh one, actually. I love that. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Little, well, little velvet finish. I don't have a dinner jacket. We're going to get you one. In Spain, the, the dons all have, like, they're quite uh, red ones, blue ones and stuff, and they have, like, patterns on and the silky lapels like you've got. I'm going to get a blue one next. Yeah. I mean... When you come over, you, if you ever come over to Gibraltar, Trevor, we'll have to get all dressed up. I will. Got, I will be coming over. Right I mean... Right. People that wear these jackets are um, combat veterans, not drivers and shit like that. We are proper combat veterans. That well, I was only, right, a, I was only right. a driver. I was a nothing. Yeah. Oh, so only, only heroes can wear that. You're shit, a yeah? dom. You're a dom. <laughs> I'm a dom. No, dumb. actually, yeah. Graham. Actually, Graham. I'm going to tell you now. You can buy. Ready for those for those that like. These jackets are available. In next. <laughs> right. Nice one. I'll have to get one. I'll have to Ooh, get one. Oh, I like snazzy, the lining. Lining, yeah. Is it real? Well, I'll answer you. This isn't, this isn't Savile Row. No, it's not. Look, I'll show you. Oh, I love that. Look, there's the inside of it. I love that. You? Ready? But next is quite a, that's quite a yeah. pricey brand. That's really next. lovely. I'm impressed. I like it. It looks all right. It looks really good on you. We'll definitely get you a jacket. You'd have to get me it's one. Yeah, smoking yeah. jacket. I want a cravat and a, and a, and, a, and a, one of those Winston. I've always wanted to smoke a Winston Churchill cigar. Whichever I don't even know what brand they used to smoke, but you know, I want a Churchill cigar and a photograph. You know, okay. And um, and I I. <laughs> Why not? I was right. Uh, fuck it. Um, you know, you know. I know Matthew. Matthew lives in Texas. Matthew's invited me and Gwen over numerous times. It's just get. Uh, truthfully, it's getting the time. Um, but there's a company out there that makes cigars. Have invited me across to their company to have a look at stuff and get the cigar. The scars look really. Nice. I'll send you a link if you have a look at it. Um, yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. yeah. I'm. Uh, Sorry. Go on. Yeah. I've never. I've never smoked. Have I smoked a cigar? I think I have in Afghanistan. They were called Cafe Cream or something. So basically, at the end of a at the end of a bottle. Cafe Cream, the small ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When Please. we got back to camp, I remember getting back to camp and Frank O'Connor. Uh, Frank O'Connor is a guy I hold in high esteem. Fantastic soldier, fantastic sergeant major, and some people you just you, some people you just respect, and I, I respect them, and then. Um, great guy but then um, i would come in from certain battles and sit down with him at the steps and my combats were soaking from sweat and i just sit there and he'd be like yeah 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 here mate and hand you a, a cigar just to sit and smoke you weren't really smoking to say you know like a victory it was just like it was just like it wasn't a victory you never you never celebrate a victory whenever you've had you've killed someone what you can do is sit down there and just contemplate and fucking mm. it's sad it must be terrible. It must be terrifying getting fucking shot at. I mean, I've never been in a war. I've never, you know, never. 
But you know, to have people, to have yeah. people lining up an AK at you and firing at you, that must be terrifying. Graham, the truth is, um, you don't think about it. You don't. The minute you're on that, right, the minute you leave camp and you, you, you step your foot on the ground, you do not think about yourself once. Your eyes are on stalks and you're looking at every possible area where they could be shot at and you're keeping an eye on each other. You're moving around the battlefield watching yeah, death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can yeah, yeah. Whenever you, whenever you, the thing is, see, see whenever you have guys, uh, I was very lucky that I had 32, 33, 34 guys that were just fucking awesome. Not, I, we had no passengers. You know what? Usually you get a weak link. Every you get a weak link. I never had a weak link. Every mm -hmm. man was brilliant, and and they knew when someone sat down, someone looked the other way. When someone got up, someone moved in a different. When someone moved off, someone moved into that position. It was like clockwork, and I was very fortunate to have guys which were fantastic that knew everything. They knew it. They, they were brilliant. I mean, um, they were young and they had to learn. I mean, imagine having having the youngest. No. Having a 19-year-old and a 22-year-old at the front of your platoon, whose job it was to spot IEDs. I mean, that's that's a job I would never have wanted. Fuck that shit. Um, fuck to spot that anyway. You know what I mean? But just the lead wasps coming past. You know, I'd shit myself. I'd, I'd be, I'd be one of the people keeping my fucking head down. Mm. Mm. Sure. Yeah, we all did. Everyone tries to keep their head down. I mean, but you have assets, which. There's assets there at your fingertips, and people sometimes didn't want to use them. And I, I wanted them every time before I went out in the ground. I would go, Frankie uh, or Frankie or the bosses. I'd go, any chance of getting UAV up? Any chance of Predator UAV, which is an unmanned aviation? So I would ask them, can we get it up to fly the route? So whenever I go out, I know what's happening. So the ground. I mean, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. why have this stuff sitting there if you're not going to use it? Absolutely. That's what's that's what's fucked them up here because the the, the Spanish government bought a lot of British drones. Yeah, Americans yes. and they're, 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 they're monitoring the straight drones all the time, and all, all the smugglers have disappeared. You don't see them anymore. Yeah, Carter just said, "No, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, people." Graham, do you yeah. feel like you're a veteran? I serve, never went to war and just don't class myself as no i don't class myself as a veteran no i don't i was in the army for three years i did nothing went nowhere right didn't get any medals didn't right. do anything. i was a, i was a zero i was nothing i got grim no grim. i don't class myself as a veteran grim, was a fucking to... hero he got the fucking military cross you know what i mean grim i'm gonna listen i know there's veterans watching this and I, i'm gonna give you my opinion on a veteran and my opinion a veteran is someone who passed out of military training and went to battalion. If you've joined the military and you've been kicked out, if you haven't passed training and you haven't made it to your unit, then you should never, ever, ever be allowed to wear a veteran's badge. I mm. think you're a fucking waste of fucking oxygen. Yeah. If you haven't managed to pass military training and you've been kicked out or you've left or something, then you should be ashamed to call yourself a veteran. That's my I opinion. Would never, I would never call myself a veteran. You know, I was in I was in for like three years minimum. Got Graham, out. I hated it. Hated Graham, the any, no, Graham, that, you look at this whole no, I'm not a veteran. I didn't do anything. Nothing. There, there's two types of veterans, Graham. You've got a veteran and you've got a combat veteran. There's still veterans, but one's combat, one's veteran. If you have in order for you to be a proper veteran, you must have passed training. You must have went to I your out. I had a passing out parade, of course it is, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I don't think anyone should be able to call themselves a veteran if they haven't passed out of training. Yeah, yeah. Well, it we, was 10 weeks when I was in. I was at Buller Barracks. Yeah, like like the RBL. Well, the the RBL mean. and the RBL have this bullshit saying, a day service is a lifetime of support. No, if you haven't passed out of training, you don't deserve a fucking lifetime of support. It's bullshit. Mm. I was all keen as fuck. You know, I passed out. I got my cross rifles on my unit, on my number twos. You know what I mean? When I passed out. Yeah. I was keen as yeah. mustard. When I got to the unit, which I got posted over the fucking roads, 27 LSG, uh, which was still at Buller Barracks, and that was like uh, logistic support group regiment. You know, it was a spearhead unit. Yeah. And you had to be like ready to go to like Bryce Norton and, and like that. And then you didn't get there fast enough. And so you oh, did, Graham, like, you, you did three weeks on and, three, and it was all different 
Graham, oh, you've served. Oh, it's You're very good. Anything. I did nothing. Nothing. Graham, do you know what? Here's the thing. You're very good at putting down your own service, which is a bit fucking sad to hear, if I'm honest. See if you've passed out of training and you've served in the military. You're a veteran. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter. I know guys in my unit that passed out of training, went to the unit, went to a rifle company, found out they were useless, went to a store, found out they were useless, and ended up doing silver service, working in the fucking sergeant's mess. These are guys that go along. They, they, I mean, it's not their fault. Lots of people want to join up. Some people aren't cut out for it. Other people are brilliant at it. It depends on the role. Like, for instance, my dad was in reconnaissance between Prince of Wales' own. His unit was the first unit deployed in Northern Ireland. Uh, mm -hmm. He took part in Operation Mortarman. He drove a third scout car. But he did Northern Ireland. He did Cyprus, UN, Northern Ireland. He would have loved to have had Afghan and Iraq and the rest of the fucking shit that followed. Yeah, it was yeah. just... I remember... Well, you know, yeah. To this day, there's, there's things about the military that I, I really respect and really like. I mean, for example, you know, the 4 by 4 driving, all that shit in the mud. I mean, I didn't appreciate it at the time, but it was the B3 driver's course, it was called. It was great. And yeah. I, you know, one of the things that I was really into in the Army was guns, and I was like I was like a really good shot, and I really enjoyed I really, that was what I wanted <coughs> to do. And uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't manifest itself. I was in the Army, I was in, in, the, in, in the shooting team, and, uh, you know, I, I won loads of, loads of trophies and shit. Mm. And, uh, it all came to a head one day when I when I applied for a firearms license, to, and they said to me, "Go to the police station at Aldershot, get a, an application form, fill the application form in, get your CO to sign it, and that's it. You've got it." Because this guy in a shop, he had a three hundred three the Enfield, it was SMLE, and he wanted fifty quid for it. And I thought, "Get it, I'm having that. I want that." I gave the guy a tenner. This is I'm going back to like 1980, 81, somewhere around. How does it feel though, Grim? How does it feel knowing now that your your wife's a better shot than you? <sighs> Depressing, mate. <laughs> but but she she is. Is. I've got to be honest. I'm not. I don't think so. No, no, Trevor. I mean, he's she's shot the candle out, and I missed it. And that's that. If you miss, you might miss by one millimetre, but a miss is a miss. Might as well be a mile. Yeah. I don't okay. think I would. Uh, I think my I think my zero would be pretty shit now. I mean. The other day, I struggled um, to read something from from, from a book for, just from a certain distance, and I was like, "Fuck, maybe I need to sort things out here with my own eyesight." Yeah. Hey, Trevor, I've still got. I've, this is how sad I am. Right, I'll just show you this. Good gracious, I'm going to get another get another drink. I've still got an air rifle. <laughs> Well, I'm, still, I'm still shooting in the back garden with my air rifle, right? You know, well, do you know what? Here's the thing. You know, one of them. I had I had a gun in my house not that long ago. And with all this shit I was going through, I had to get rid of it in case I was accused of using a gun on somebody. So uh, it went away somewhere. But uh, I had a gun in the house for a while there. But uh, it's gone now. I don't have it now. But uh, I got rid of it. Yeah. It's now with someone that's got uh, the, the, the yeah. competent, someone that's very competent with it. Yeah. Well, well, I, I did a lot of shooting before I joined the army. I, I, I had an air rifle, you know, just like that, really. One seven seven brake barrel, put the pellet in, you know, shot it. Linda so, Wagner. I did loads of shooting before I went in the army, and when I joined the army, they said, "There's an SLR, all yeah. right, an FN," and uh, I just pointed it and put like all the bullets on the bullseye and twenty five yards, and they went. Linda Wagner here is saying that her brother. How come you can do that? How come you can do that? I thought, well, it's fucking easy, isn't it? You know, it's not difficult for fuck's sake, but you know. Well, Linda, um, Linda. There's the godmother's. There's the godmother's gone. Look at this one. Oh, fought in Vietnam. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. He was never the same. He's so imagine. Yeah. Yeah. This. This is this. I mean, Trevor will have a better idea than me for sure. You know, you go to somewhere like Vietnam for fuck's sake. You know. What did they do in Vietnam? They were just like killing people, weren't they? I don't, I don't know what. Do you know what I didn't like, Graham? Do you know what I didn't like? I fucking hated this. Uh, when whenever you went out the uh, whenever we were in Sang in DC at the at the fob, yeah. Anyway, whenever we were leaving there, we would go out the back and we would cut right, and right at the back was a cornfield, and I hated it. See, it was in season. 
the cornfield was about eight foot height. Fixed bayonets, right? Fixed bayonets. That skirt, see going through there. Oh my god! See, see when you were, see whenever they hit you there. Oh my god! I I hated it. But you know what I did like? Whenever we went firm and we sat down, it was very claustrophobic. For anyone that's done it, it was very claustrophobic. So what I would do is I would break down the corner around me to give me a bit of airway so I could see the sky, and then I would go, and then I would go. And I would peel back the corn. Beautiful. And I, I, I'd eat the corn. It was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'd bring it back. I survived. Bring back. Thing is, though, Trevor, you, I, you'll know this. You know this. When, you, when you're on the ranges, all the shot, we, were, we used to go to Ash Ranges, okay? And, uh, you know, you'd, get, you'd have 100 metres, 200 metres, and you'd get these targets popping up from the box. And you get so many exposures of so many seconds. And you think, well, this is fucking easy. Bang, how can you fucking miss? You know what I mean? But when, you, when you're in combat, as you've been, these targets are shooting back at you, for fuck's sake. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, um, really, that must be super scary, honestly. Zebra, uh, I, I can't say it. Zebra, Zebra K9 just said the rules of engagement screwed up our military. In Afghanistan, the rules of engagement were shite. So we would have card alpha. We had to go on card alpha, but if we wanted to, wait, this is fucked up. We would see Taliban moving in front of us with weapon systems, and we weren't allowed to engage them and kill the Taliban until they had fired upon us first, and then we had to get permission. We would go on the on the radio, could get on the net, and get back to Bastion and then ask. Could we have permission to change our rules of engagement to card 439 Alpha? Warfighting. Yeah. Oh, wait out. Oh, I don't want to make a decision. I'll pass it. And it bounced around the different chains of command until it was okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're now taking casualties. Well, then now you can swap your rules of engagement. I mean, it was just bullshit. A whole lot of it. Well, you know, I've, I've, I've had this debate many times. I was talking about the, you know, the bombing of Dresden. The RAF didn't take any prisoners. Right? They they actually killed the official figure. The official figure was twenty five thousand civilians. Okay, they went over Dresden, and you, you can Google it. It's it's, it's on there. It's, 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 and they just they just used chemical weapons. They just bombed shit out of the city, right? And they figured that the civilian population is 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 breeding. It's breeding Nazis. Right, it's providing people workforce for the German war machine. And this is World War Two, okay? And they just indiscriminately bombed Dresden with chemical weapons, incendiary weapons. And they killed 25,000 people is the official figure. And they probably killed a lot more, I don't know. But when you look at it and you think about it, you can't possibly take prisoners, you know, when you're doing shit like that. This is the Royal Air Force. And you think, well, that that has got to be a war crime, you know? It's got to be. It's got to be. But it wasn't. It wasn't. It was. It was. It was accepted as part of the war. So you know, if you're sending ground troops in, my theory is you shouldn't send ground troops in at all unless there's a complete breakdown in uh, in political circles where you can't negotiate. So if you if you finish up sending troops into a situation, they've got to kill everybody. They just don't take any prisoners. They to kill all the combatants they can find. That's my opinion. Well, it should never happen. I, I'm, I'm a really anti-war person. I'm not into war. No one you know, is. I, I see loads no of civilians that you want to just, you don't want nothing to do with it to be extracted no one, from that no, no, one, no one should be in the war. But I've just put that post up, uh, right, that Tay Tom said his uncle missed an action, right, in Korea, right, Rolos Rifles, right. I think it was about five years ago. Um, I read a book. It was a small book. I read basically. I, I was reading the Ipswich Star, which is a local paper, and I happened to see a book. Is it Ronald Garnon? Ronald Garn the name rings a bell. Ronald Garnon can't remember the name. I think it's Ronald Garnon. And I read a story where Ronald Garnon was a prisoner of war in Japan. He was held there by the Japanese for many for five years prisoner of war, and he'd written a book. A, uh, a book. I can't remember the title of it. Uh, but anyway, uh, I got in touch with the, the journalist that wrote the story in the Ipswich Star. And I said, do me a favor, can you pass on my name and address or and my mobile number to the individual about that story? I would like to go and sit down and have a chat with him. 
Yeah. Now, the, reason, the, re the reason why, I, my, my mum and dad know about this. So the, the reason why I did it was because I was going through a shit time with my mental health. I was in depression. Um, I would wake up sweating. Uh, and all my PTSD had kicked out. I was, I was in a bad way. And uh, I wanted to go and meet Ronald Garnham, uh, who was, he had just, he had just turned 100. He had just turned 100 years of age. And I went, fuck, I want to go. On. Anyway, so I came to Felix, though, and I drove up and uh, got out and I met his uh, his son and family and went in and sat down with him. And uh, his wife was there as well. I mean, it was his wife was still there, both over 100. I sat down with him. We had a chat, uh, gave him a hug, sat down, and I just was picking his brains. I said, listen, Ronald, uh, I... I just want to ask you questions about mental health and stuff because I know you've been there, you've done it, you've, you've done everything there is to do. Um, is there ever a time? Is there ever a time where I just I asked him? I mean, I was I, I'm getting a little bit emotional, but I said to him, "Is there ever a time where it eases up? Is there ever a time where it eases up and you can live, and you can?" And he went, "Well, Trevor, um, the hate will never go." He told me this: the hate will never go. Mm -hmm. I says. Could you ever, could you ever forgive the Japanese? No. He says, I will always hate the Japanese for what they put us through. I will never forgive them. And you could yeah. see he, he became really angry because I asked that question. And I could see the hate was just below the surface. He hated the Japanese, what they did to them. And I went, okay. And then I changed the subject. I changed the subject and I just started chatting to him about life in Felix Stone and stuff, but, um, yeah, so much, yeah, 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 but, um, no, it's, it's true. It's true. I've, I've spoken to many veterans who have actually been in combat. You know, my, my father-in-law, for example, he was, he was a chinder in Burma. You know, I've spoken to him about all kinds of stuff. And even I was in prison, you know, and, and you, you've got this built in hatred for the establishment and the screws are there. I mean, they're, they're the first people that you see that you, you, the longer you're in, you're building up hatred for them. But it's not their fault. It's not their fault at all. They're I not know. the ones. I mean, they, you know, they didn't put you there. They, you know. But, yes. So, but, Graham, different era. What the Japanese did to prisoners of war was. Yes. Yes. They were yes. getting. The Japanese prisoner prison of war camps were receiving Red Cross parcels. They were receiving medicine and rations for the prisoners. And the Japanese soldiers kept everything and gave them nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, there was a lot more. They were doing a lot more. Yeah. A lot more yeah. Well, I actually made a video. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but uh, it's it's way back in, on my channel. In fact, it's probably not even live yeah. anymore. But my, my father, he's dead now. But I mean, he he was in. He was a pisshead. He was a pisshead. He left the army and he just crawled into a bottle, and uh, he stayed there. He stayed there for the rest of his life. And uh, obviously, I, I married his daughter. No, she was my is, first. This wife. is not my my father. This no, is not no, my no, no, no. My first wife. Yeah. I've had three wives. Okay, Fiona's my third wife. Third time lucky. First, first two were a fuck up. Okay. No. But my first wife. My first wife. His name was Billy Wormold. Okay. Lanks you married a bloke. Years. Like you married a bloke? Oh, her dad, her dad. All right, sorry. He did it in World War II. And, uh, you know, he told me some stories when he was drunk. And I've got a pretty good idea. I'll, I'll leave Yes, there. I mean, yeah. Um, I remember putting my section, Gulf War 2003, we went through different towns. And I... I remember putting my section in all round defence so I could nip into an Iraqi barber's, barber's and get my hair cut. <laughs> I, we put guys all around the street just like, it, mate, are you, are you cutting her? Uh, yes, yes, I cut your hair. I says, uh, I'm I've, got, I've, got a, I've got a question for you, Trevor. Because like, you've been in combat, I haven't. But this is This is a serious question. When I was in training in the army in Salisbury Plain, right, we had arcs of fire and we had to stand to, okay, at, at dawn and dusk because yep. that was the most likely time that you get hit, apparently. Yep. 
no Larker fireys from that trio over there to those clumper ones, whatever. Did you ever get hit at dawn or dusk? Um, do you know what? Truthfully, uh, for those of you that are watching this that served in Afghanistan, um, we got hit uh, at the same time every night. Yeah, uh, it sounds weird, but it's true. Uh, so basically what happens is in, in Afghanistan, uh, as it was, as you could see the sky get going, going dark and you could see some of the street lights still on, wasn't many street lights in Sion, but a few on, we would have a thing called a call to prayer. So right about 6 p.m. ish, now between 5 and 6, I can't remember the exact time now, uh, but right about between 5 and 6, there would be a call to prayer. And you'd see, you'd hear the microphones going, -la -la, and you'd hear it going across the whole of fucking Sion. And that was us going, okay, bomb up, get the weapons cocked, GPMG cocked, prepare it, bring up the other GPMGs, especially in Sanger 4, GPMG, GPMG, GPMG. You have three guys, one on each gun. You'd have guys behind ready to bomb, bomb up with the uh, stuff. And um, you'd sit there and you'd wait. See the minute the call to prayer ended? Every night, like fucking clockwork. You get hit from about five different locations. Honest to God. So, yes, stand two is something that needs to always be taught. And what you would have had is a range card in training. You had that... Nothing ever changes. The better you are at a range card, the easier your life is in reality. You have your range card out, you have your axis, you have your left of arc, your right of arc, your half left, your half right, prominent, permanent things, 200, 400, 600, where it is, and you'd have it all worked out. But um, yeah, that's that happens, Graham. That, it, it's amazing. But something in training, which if you would ignore that in training, you would be killed in a battlefield. You need to have that. Mm. Mm. Do you know what we did one night though? Because we got pissed off. Go. On. We turned a GP. We turned a GPMG on the fucking speakers and blew them out the fucking post because we were sick of hearing that call to prayer bollocks. So we just blew. <laughs> Shut the speakers. I don't out. blame you. I don't blame you. No. I would. I would want to. Yeah. Mm. Not. It's not good. Yeah. But there. Um. Um. It would be naive to sit here and to say we smashed them. We didn't. Uh, the truth is, the yeah. Taliban. The Taliban were resilient. They were robust. They were fucking tough fighters. They were really good. Imagine having a member of the Taliban with a pair of flip flops on, two magazines and an AK, running through the village, and you're chasing them with your helmet and body armor on, your backpack on, your full kit, your weapon. The amount of weight we carried, we would never catch them. Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I remember talking, my, my dad, my dad, when he grew up, he lived in a council house, and the kid next door, in the next council house, he went to Korea, okay, he was on tanks, and he told me, he told me every cunt shoots at a fucking tank, everybody just shoots at a tank, and you think, well, they're bulletproof, aren't they, for fuck's sake, but there's a reason people shoot at tanks, <laughs> I to get them to shoot at the Naturally, so they can't see fuck all, you know what I mean? They can see well, minuscule. We, we've so, been on for only two hours. I'm going to call the night in a second, but I'm going to tell you a true story about a tank. All my, all my kids' life, this is true. You, in the army, you do exercises to basically get your skills better. And there's a thing called TESX, which is Tactical Endurance Simulation Exercise. And it's done in Salisbury Plain. And basically, you turn up and you put this like little thing over your helmet and it's got lasers, so if you fire a laser, it hits it, and it lets you know if you've been shot, and you wear a vest. We were in Cope Hill Down, and we were being pinned down. Uh, we were trying to break into Cope Hill Down, my battalion, and Cope Hill Town was being held by two para, and they were fucking robust. They were they were not letting us in. They weren't doing it. They were brilliant. The we, we managed to get a foothold in, and we took over a couple of buildings. And uh, My colonel, my, my boss was Tim Collins at the time. He'd just come back from Hereford as squadron commander and this was his first time leading the battalion <laughs> so we're in there and we're fighting we're in i mean there's like 50 of us in like four rooms and we're all in there trying to anyway next you know there's a stop brigade commander has come for a visit so we're not going to everyone there's, there's like a ceasefire because the brigade commander visits and the brigade commander's walking through with the colonel and uh, he comes up to the room 
and I'm in the top floor in a, in a room where my, my guys are sitting down and they're making a brew. But the CEOs, one of the guys with the R7 CEO was a guy, is it Jay McCulloch? Yeah, Jay McCulloch. John, McC John McCulloch. Great guy. Great, de decent soldier. Anyway, he's there. And the brigade kind of walks up to him and he's looking, he's standing back in the window just looking out. And the brigade commander walks up and he goes, Ah, who are you? Ah, Ranger McCulloch, sir. Ranger McCulloch. Ranger McCulloch. Um, what would you do? What would you do if a Russian T-45, T-40, T no, T-50, T-5455, fuck me, the tanks are gone. What would you do if a Russian T-5455 came out the front there? How would you cope with that? He says, well, sir, I would get out my 94mm uh, anti-tank rocket launcher and I would shoot it. Oh, would you? And where would you get that from? He says, the same place you got that fucking tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate. So, uh, hypothetical fire. Yeah. There's a hypothetical fire, Corporal Coates, in the corner of this room. How are you going to put it out, sir? With a hypothetical fire extinguisher, sir. I know. I mean, you've got to laugh at people. I mean, uh, I'm glad it's over now. I, 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 I think today's <coughs> guys, get, today's guys and girls doing things for, for their country, um, I don't know. It, it is fascinating, though, talking to people who've really been there, really done it. Yeah. You learn such a lot. We're all broken, Graham. have been there and done it. There's guys yeah. in the chat here that I know from, from the military. Their name's coming up. And and do you know what? Um, they're all broken. We're all broken in our own way. We are. We're all broken. We just get through it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, maybe guilt's got a part to do with that. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I think no. I, no. If you didn't handle something well, Maybe, maybe, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, Graham. I think everyone I shot fucking deserved it. I don't hold any guilt for that. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. It's survival. They're yeah, shooting yeah, you. Yeah. You've got to shoot them. Oh, fuck me. If someone was shooting at me, I'd shoot at them. That fucking is the nature. Right. No, I wouldn't feel guilt. Yeah. That would not be I don't know, but if, if I was flying over Dresden, for example, going back to yeah. that, I wouldn't, I, have have proud, I wouldn't have felt proud about the Thousand Bomber Raid. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And I'm into airplanes. You know I am. I suffered up until recently. Uh, I've always suffered survivor's guilt. We're well, that's something I don't know anything about. That's something you'd have to talk to me about that because I don't, I don't understand that. Being, being sat beside somebody, basically be, being sat beside somebody whenever they've been killed, and people around you being injured and you've been unscathed. It's like what the fuck? How? 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 Um, I had survivor skill for quite some time, uh, but now I don't. I'm going to be honest, now I don't give a fuck. The amount of shit being thrown at me, I don't give a fuck. Uh, I really don't. I don't care anymore. I just, I just, I just, now I get up each morning, I'm blessed, and I try and instill gratitude into my son, which he has tenfold, and then that's it. All I can do now is just pass on what, what little knowledge I have to him and to make him to be a better person. Other than that, I don't care. It's a fascinating subject, Trevor. It's, it's something I'm, I really enjoy learning about, for sure. So I think we'll call it a night because we're, we're, we're up to yeah, two hours. Yeah, nearly two hours. Well, listen, guys. Thank really you for coming on. Thank, Thank you, you very for much for having us. Thank you so much. It's been fascinating. People. Listen, thanks, everyone, for coming on. Please, um, I don't know what to say to you, apart from make sure you like the video. Um, Hit the like button. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Trevor's channel. I don't get it. Listen, <laughs> we're trying to build your channels up. Hopefully you get a lot more subscribers. Uh, I, I love chatting the two of you. Uh, I could chat all night, but uh, I won't because I know Gwen's coming home from work and it's the first thing she's going to shout at me. So. Thank you very much for having us on. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a wonderful evening, people. Okay? Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Well, everyone, thank you for tuning in to tonight's little live stream. It wasn't what you expected, was it? Anyway, uh, Graham and Fiona, wonderful people. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, why not? It's free. Anyway, take care, people, and I'll see you tomorrow for tomorrow's round.